What's going on guys, it's Alex here. So today I'm going to do a video on the 2x72 grinder that I decided to buy. This is the AMK Tactical knife making, we'll get into this in a second, uh, 2x72 grinder. Um, I specifically want to touch on why I decided to buy this grinder over all of the other grinders out there. I also want to uh, show you a couple things I like about it and there's a couple things that I don't really like about it, but they're not deal breakers. Um, so we'll get into that um, and just give you a general overview of the machine. This is the AMK 77. This is uh, their top of the line machine. This has the VFD, it has a one and a half horsepower motor. Um, and it also has their proprietary uh, what's this their proprietary tooling arm assembly which is not really a tooling arm assembly but that's the only it's the only terminology i know uh, to use in order to describe it um, it has i guess their proprietary uh, work rest system here on the side it uses uh, these uh, aluminum rails which i'll give you a better look at in a second and it has basically a swivel so that you can swivel um, your uh, flat platen to a contact wheel super quickly. Now I'll touch more on this in a second, but first off I want to talk about, first thing I want to do is talk about uh, pricing because everybody wants to know pricing. This is one of the, probably one of the cheapest 2x72s on the market at this time. I don't know of another company who is as competitively priced as AMK is with their 2x72s. This is uh, what I would call a good uh, budget machine and what I mean by budget machine is that uh, for what you're getting you're getting a lot for your money compared to other similar products on the market what I don't mean by budget is that it's a cheap machine this is a legitimate 2 by 72 it's gonna do everything that you need it to do in terms of knife making um, it's not cheaply built at least as far as I can tell is there's nothing really cheap about it and the price itself is not cheap in the grand scheme of things this thing's almost two thousand bucks right now it's eighteen ninety nine I don't know if that includes shipping or not um, you're gonna have to check the website for a lot of this stuff because obviously a lot of this stuff changes um, so eighteen ninety nine for this machine um, plus shipping is probably gonna be a hundred bucks hundred and fifty bucks again don't quote me on that so you're looking at around $2,000 to your door. Again, you might be able to get it for slightly cheaper depending on when you buy it, um, if you buy it on sale. Now, I bought this on sale. I bought it on like a Black Friday sale um, or uh, a pre-Christmas sale, something like that. But I did pay exactly what anybody else would pay for this. It wasn't sent to me. I didn't get a discount on it or anything like that. And at the time, they didn't know who I was and I don't even know who I am right now. I'm just a guy with a video camera shooting a video about a grinder. So uh, nothing was sent to me with the exception of this, this small wheel attachment. Uh, those of you who watch the channel regularly will know that when this showed up, I did have some problems with it, but those problems were taken care of super, super quickly. The customer service, the customer support with these guys is fantastic. Some of the best uh, one of the best companies, or if not the best company I've ever dealt with in my entire life. Super impressed by the customer uh, support. And that goes a long way towards, um, you know, making future purchases with them and recommending uh, what they have to sell. Um, you know, it's not a perfect world. Sometimes things slip by quality control and they get out into the world. It doesn't matter to me. What matters is the fact that if there is an issue, um, they'll take care of you when there's an issue. And they absolutely did that. If you wanna see exactly what happened, I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this video explaining the whole thing. Um, Cause you know, that would be a whole video in itself to explain what happened, but super happy with their customer support. Now, again, this small wheel holder was uh, something that I mentioned in that video that I wanted to pick up. And a couple of days later, this showed up in the mail. I didn't ask for it. I actually said that I wanted to, to pay for it, but uh, there's not much I can do now that it's here in my hands. Um, I suppose I could send it back to him, but that would be kind of dumb. So uh, if you're watching this, uh, AMK, thank you very much for the small wheel holder. It goes uh, 
that's that's huge thank you very very much for that it's not going to influence my the things that i have to say about this for everybody else uh, what i have to say about this is exactly my opinion on how i feel about it regardless of whether or not something was sent to me i did pay exactly what anybody else would pay and i think it's very fairly priced for what you get you get a lot of stuff with this uh, that includes basically everything that you see here i don't have the platen assembly on here now that kind of fits on here like this it's upside down like this, um, and you get a contact wheel. Uh, when you're pricing these things out, be careful and look at exactly what they come with and what they don't come with. Some of these things don't come with a contact wheel included. You might look at it and be like, oh wow, that's a great price. And then you realize it doesn't have a contact wheel or it doesn't come with a platen or it doesn't come with a work rest or you gotta choose between the three. So definitely make sure that you are comparing exactly what you're getting to exactly what you're getting when you're pricing these things out. Um, again, I don't know of another uh, another grinder that is as competitively priced as this one for what you get. Now, when I was looking at these, I was originally looking at uh, the uh, TW90 from Travis Wirtz and the AMK, or I'm sorry, not, not the AMK, the, uh, uh, the KMG, there's too many, <laughs> too many letters. Um, so it was between those three grinders. Now, those grinders are, they're a lot more expensive than this. Um, the KMG is a, a machine that's been in, around for a long time. Everybody seems to have one. They have a pretty good reputation as far as uh, you know quality goes. It's a legitimate machine. And the other machine that I was looking at was a TW90 from Wirtz Machine Works. Uh, most, most of you guys are probably gonna know who Travis Wirtz is. Um, and I actually, called, uh, I actually called him and spoke with him directly. Um, I called, nobody answered, and then he called me back. and was like, hey, this is Travis Wirtz from Wirtz Machine Works. I'm like, dude, don't you have a secretary to return your calls for you? Um, but anyway, super helpful, super helpful dude. Uh, talked me through everything, answered all my questions. Um, and I, I would say that, you know, the customer support from him is going to be awesome as well. Um, the only problem with the TW90 that I kept coming or kept running into was the price. That thing's, by the time it ships to your house, that thing's almost 4,000 bucks. So you're literally talking about twice the price of this thing. Um, now that machine does do a lot more. That goes into the horizontal position and it also goes into the vertical position. It has a lot more stuff that you can do with it. Uh, right now, AMK does not have a surface grinder attachment for this. And as far as I know, I don't know how you would ever attach one because it does not use a traditional tooling arm assembly. It has their own proprietary system, which does have its benefits, uh, especially for my situation right now. But it, you know, with anything proprietary, it can have its issues just, as, just the same. Now, you know, when you're pricing these things out and you're trying to make the decision on which machine to buy, whether this machine's an option for you or say, let's just you know compare this to the KMG because that's the grinder that everybody knows about. Uh, with this thing coming in at $18.99, as of now, you know, prices change all the time, but as of now, it's $18.99. The KMG is gonna be, you know, six, seven, maybe even $800 more expensive than this. Uh, and that's a lot of money. Uh, that's the difference between buying just a grinder and possibly buying a heat treating oven as well. So. That's just the route that I decided to take. I decided to get the cheaper, the cheaper, the more budget friendly option as far as grinders go and put that extra money towards buying an oven. And I think for me, that was definitely the right decision to make uh, because, you know, heat treating is one of the, the biggest things that you can probably do in knife making is make sure that your heat treating is as good as you can possibly get it because you can shape a knife with an angle grinder. And if it's heat treated properly, it's going to make an awesome knife. Um, you can shape a knife using the best grinder in the world and if it's heat treated poorly, it's gonna suck. So the next thing that I'd like to talk about is the VFD. Well, actually, hold on. Let's, uh, let's talk about the motor because this thing comes with a, it says uh, JLEM USA. That's, I think, the brand of the motor. I've never heard of that brand. It's basically an off-brand motor as far as I can tell. Is that a bad thing? Um, honestly, I don't know. What I will say is that um, I pretty much grew up working on a farm and we always had uh, half a dozen of the cheaper Chinese motors laying around the farm running various pieces of equipment that sit out in the cold, the heat, the snow, all kinds of weather conditions and they always worked. I can't remember of a single time in my entire life and I've been around stuff that's run off of electric motors a lot and I can't remember a single time in my entire life where a motor has gone up and just stopped working. 
I don't have a problem with this being sort of an off-brand motor. It's not a Balador or a Leeson or anything like that. I've, I've never heard of this motor company, but honestly, I could care less. Um, I haven't had problems with it so far. I haven't heard of a whole lot of other people having problems with theirs. Um, in fact, I haven't heard of a whole lot of people having problems with the, uh, the cheaper uh, Chinese motors. I just, I just haven't heard of them. They're just not that common. Um, and I think the reason is because there's not a whole lot that really goes wrong with them. I might be wrong. Somebody out there's probably had a bad experience and will never buy a cheaper motor ever again. But, you know, I've never, never experienced problems with the cheaper electric motors. This is a one and a half horsepower motor. They do give you the option of upgrading to a two horsepower motor. Uh, you know, as far as that goes, if you're running this off of 120 volts, which I am, uh, you're only going to get a horsepower and a half out of it. You're not going to get the full two horsepowers unless you configure this for 220 volts. So with that being said, I've never had issues with power on anything. And that's including any of the larger knives that I've made. Uh, hold on one second. This knife right here was ground on this thing. Uh, you know, that's a big flat bevel that requires quite a bit of a power to do. Um, never had power or power issues whatsoever. It's always just torn through everything that I put it up against. I got it with the VFD um, and I'm gonna sing this right now. I would, I don't care if you have to save up an extra six months to get the machine with the VFD. Save up the extra money and buy the machine with the VFD. Don't even bother buying a single speed. Uh, you're gonna regret it because uh, having the option to dial the speed down to almost a crawl is super, super helpful, especially when it comes to things like finishing, using finishing belts um, and sharpening. Um, you can dial this thing down slow enough to where you can sharpen really, really good on this. Um, I'll probably do a separate video on how I do that. Um, all the knives that I made with this thing have been sharpened on it. There's just no sense, or it doesn't make sense to me to, you know, uh, sharpen everything by hand. It would just it would just take way too much time to grind in those secondary bevels by hand. It, you know, I go through stones like crazy and all that other stuff. Um, so all the stuff that I've sharpened on, or all the stuff that I've made, have been sharpened on this machine um, using a couple of different belts. And it's so nice. It's so nice to be able to uh, dial the speed back and do that. Um, you can get this thing running super slow and not have any issues sharpening. You know, again, going back to the power thing, a lot of times I will run this anywhere between 20% and 70%. Uh, that's basically the sweet zone there. Um, I very rarely go over 70%, um, even when I'm profiling. It's just, you know, it just doesn't seem necessary. I'm not saying that you can't or you won't, or I have never gone over 70%, but you know, if you've got a good sharp belt, it takes off steel as fast as I ever need to take it off. Um, again, I've never had power issues or anything like that. Um, I don't even know if I've ever taken this to 100%. Um, so yeah, I mean, power wise, it's, uh, it's got plenty of power. I mean, if you're Liam Hoffman and you're profiling axes all day long, you might wanna get the two horsepower upgrade motor. Um, or you might need something more powerful. I don't know. I've never done that type of work, so I couldn't even I couldn't even give you advice on that. Um, but for anything knife making, I mean sword making, I don't know why you would need a whole lot more power unless you were running a surface grinder. Which on this machine, we're not running a surface grinder because they don't make a surface grinder attachment for it. Which kind of brings me into the fact that this does not use a traditional tooling arm setup, which means that. Uh, it's proprietary, and the only attachments that you can get for it are the attachments that are made by AMK. Um, I think that that's, you know, that's kind of a downside because there's stuff that uh, works on a lot of uh, the other machines because a lot of that stuff is universal with the standard, I think it's inch and a half tooling arms, um, and also the platen. Even the platen is uh, proprietary. You know, nobody else uses this style of platen um, assembly. So you can't get um, all of the various platens out there, the radius, what do they call them, the radius platens. Uh, I think they make water cool platens and all that other stuff. You can't use that on this machine because there's no way to attach it. Um, but, you know, as far as what I need, I'm just a guy right now making knives in the shed. Um, this does everything that I need it to do, and I really don't think about it that much. And I think that's a sign of a good 
purchase or a good tool. If you go out and buy something and you're still constantly thinking about um, getting a new one or uh, you know trying to figure out a better way to do something, it probably wasn't the best purchase. But you know, since I started using this thing more on a daily basis, I just haven't thought about it that much. I just come over and do what I need to do and then stop. And I never, I never think about the grinder in a sense like, oh, it'd be nice if the grinder did this or this or this. Um, but I just don't, I just don't think about it. Just come over and do the thing, do what I need to do and go back to uh, doing something else. So let's look at the, uh, the, the flat platen here. So this is essentially what it looks like. It's just a flat platen with a, uh, a key slot and then a quick release handle. And it goes on get this adjusted right. I probably spun it around a bunch of times, but it goes on just like that. Um, comes off just that easy. Um, and as far as I know, there's not a single machine out there that you can change the platen and uh, contact wheel around without taking a belt off. So I'm just going to leave the fact that you have to take the belt off in order to change attachments. Um, so, you know, you'd obviously, like I just said, take the belt off and then put this on tighten it down your platen's on loosen it and it comes off super quick uh this is a lot easier than i think uh the the tooling arm assemblies again you you gain some with the tooling arms and you lose some with the tooling arms um, but this is you know i can't imagine something being any easier than this to put on and to take off and normally what i do uh to just to line it up is i got this old square here. I actually flattened this on my uh, surface plate just to make sure it was truly flat. But when I put this on, if it doesn't fall off here, when I put this on, uh, I just hold the, the, the straight edge right on the flat platen like that and I push it right up against the contact wheels or the, uh, the idler wheels and tighten it down. And it's perfectly in line then. And uh, you know, that's how I like to run it. I know some people like to run theirs slightly proud of the uh, idler wheels, and that's fine too. You're just going to wear out your platen a little bit faster, but, you know, it's just a matter of uh, what you like to do. Now let's move on to the contact wheel assembly. That goes on exactly the same way. Sits in there and it tightens down. Actually, this is loose here. That's why I'm having trouble. But uh goes on the same way as the flat platen. Super quick, super easy. Does not require a giant tooling arm assembly, um, which is nice because I don't have a place to put a, a bunch of tooling arms. Because if this was a standard grinder, I would need, um, I believe I'd need a tooling arm for the flat platen. I'd need a tooling arm for um, the small wheel holder. And I'd need a tooling arm for the contact wheel. So that's three tooling arms that I'd need. Um, if I didn't want to undo a bunch of bolts every single time I wanted to change an attachment and that saves me a lot of space That's one of the the, the big selling points of this machine It's just how small and compact it is and the fact that I don't need to have a bunch of tooling arms lying around everywhere that I need to find a place to store it ends up being such an issue. I think that uh, KMG actually makes a tooling arm storage tree uh, specifically for storing all of the tooling arms you have to have lying around. Um, with all of this stuff, I don't, you know, I don't need that. You know, I can all sit in a tiny little bin like this. You know, that holds all of the, all of the stuff that I need to, that I need to hold. Um, as far as changing to the contact wheel, if you have it set up like this with a flat platen, all you got to do is loosen these, loosen that, rotate that around push it back, tighten everything down. And now you are in the contact wheel uh, position and you can go ahead and use the contact wheel. With tooling arms, you'd have to, you know, slide the tooling arm out, you know, set it somewhere, put the new one in. Um, you know, could you do it just as fast? Yeah, probably. Um, but it's just so smooth to be able to, um, you know, switch back and forth between the attachments. Um, you know, you don't, you don't really think about it that much. It was kind of awkward when I first got it because it seemed like there was a lot of levers and buttons and all kinds of weird stuff to push. But um, once you get the hang of it, you know, super smooth operation. 
um, and I'm happy with it. As far as changing contact wheels, super easy. An Allen wrench, I'm not gonna take it all the way off, but um, there's a little lock ring here. It's, it's so easy, it's silly. Put the Allen wrench in there, loosen it, lock ring comes off, the wheel comes off, put the new one on, and then tighten it back up. It's as easy as it can possibly be to change contact wheels. So uh, let's uh, swing this back around and put the platen back on. So there's the, the platen back on. You don't have to move anything. So basically the only thing that you have to worry about sliding this into the backwards position is with the contact wheel. So that's basically, that's basically that. Um, I think it should show everything it we need to show. They do make a uh, hollow grind fixture that can also sit in here. As far as I know, that's the only other fixture that they make at this time. Um, I'm not super interested in the hollow grind fixture. Uh, it would be kind of nice to just get it and see, you know, see how it works, see what it does. But I'm not a huge fan of hollow grinds in the first place, so I probably wouldn't use it that much. Um, and I think there's also, there's other ways that you can hollow grind um, just with setup without a fixture. So uh, I'll probably end up making a video on that in the future too. Um, so yeah, let me, uh, let's bring you over to the other side now and we'll look at the uh, work rest assembly. All right, so here's our work rest assembly. Um, this is the main thing that I think I really, I'm not, I, I don't wanna say I'm not happy with it, but I think it could be better. Um, I'm not an engineer and you know, I haven't really put a whole lot of thought into this as to why it could be better, uh, but there's just, uh, you know, it's just kind of a weird setup here. So let me get the, uh, the, uh, the work rest on here. So basically what this does real quick before I do that is, this is a piece of like aluminum. Um, there's a name for this. It's used a lot in uh, industrial applications, uh, but it's just like a, an aluminum track and the work rest slides back and forth. The work rest arm slides back and forth in that track. And you have a couple of bolts here that uh, sort of lock it down in this position. So you're all secure here. You can put your uh, work rest on. And let me just lower this down. Talk about this in a second. And essentially what we'll do here is we'll loosen these so we can slide this back and forth. So we're, we're close enough. So basically this is the completely horizontal position and the lowest position that you can really put uh, this work rest into. And I don't know if you can tell here how we're kind of like, we're above the middle of the platen. We don't have a whole lot of platen sticking up here to work on. Let me uh, bring the camera around. So see how we're kind of, you know, we got, let me get a tape measure. We got three inches worth of platen here above the tool rest with the work uh, or with the, uh, the, the arm in the horizontal position locked down. Um, that's kind of a weird thing to me. I would think that, you know, and it's just kind of the nature of the way that this is designed is that, you know, you have this whole track system here and, you know, there's nothing under here without adding a whole separate piece under here for this work rest to sit on. And I don't know if there's a way that they can design around this. It's hard for this work rest. You know, you can't put anything underneath of here for this to attach to because this has to, if you want to get it out of the way, you know, it recesses all the way back in here behind the motor. So it would end up running into the support here if you lowered it down. Um, but I think it's just kind of a weird thing that if you have it locked down in the horizontal position when you put this, your work rest on, you know, you don't have a whole lot of platen left over to work, work with up on top of here. Now, I think, you know, they, they know this. This isn't something that um, they don't know about. So their solution to this problem is that these bolts here remove. Okay. Now with those bolts removed, you can move the work rest in any position that you want it to move in. Um, and then you just lock it down like this. Now, because this is just a kind of a quick release handle and this is aluminum, you don't want to just super crank down on this so you end up uh, messing up this tracking here. So what they did was they added this little stop pin here. 
And this is, maybe this is kind of a perfect example of why this is not my favorite feature of this machine because it's kind of, uh, I don't know what the word is. It's kind of a, uh, what's the word? It's, uh, it's just not a super efficient way of messing around with, you know, your work rest arm. Um, and that, that pin there just provides a, a hard stop for the, the tooling arm to rest against. And this can be, you know, all the way adjusted back like this. And move your stop pin back. And that provides a nice solid, you know, you could probably stand on that. I wouldn't, but you probably could. A nice solid surface now. And, you know, now your work rest is mounted much lower and you can utilize more of the platen. You know, we just squared everything up there. Everything's nice and square. If we want to, uh, if we need to move our work rest out just a hair, we can't really do that without changing the angle of the work rest. So let me demonstrate that. We'll just open that and we'll pull it out a hair. And now, because this is at an angle and it's resting against the stop pin, it pushes the work rest up higher. And now we're, you know, we're significantly out of square. Now you're gonna have to re-square even on a 90 degree system that uses a tooling arm, you're still gonna have to re-square it up if you, uh, you know, if you move your work rest in any way. So that's not a huge deal, but sometimes you are doing stuff where you just need to make a tiny little adjustment in or out like this, depending on what belt you're using. And, uh, you know, absolute squareness isn't super uh, important at the time. And you just need to make that tiny little adjustment. And on a 90 degree system that uses a tooling arm, you would be able to do that. Um, and most of the time still be able to do what you're doing, like profiling or stuff like that, where, you know, it's not super important for you to be absolutely square. Um, you just need to be square enough. Um, but with this system, you can't really do that. If you make a tiny little adjustment, it throws your angle, it throws it off a good bit. Um, and you got to re-square everything. It's not a deal breaker for me, but it is something to uh, take note about. Now, I do think that they could improve on this design, um, possibly even retrofitting the grinders that are already out there because this is just a track-based system. Um, and I think somehow if they designed a plate that, you know, sat in these tracks and then this arm, this uh, work rest arm mounted to that plate. So that plate would then move back and forth on the system. And then this uh, work rest arm would then be adjusted via the plate. So you could set the angle of this at whatever angle you wanted to. Say you wanted to set it there and then you needed to make an adjustment in and out. You could always uh, loosen another quick adjustment lever and then move the whole thing uh, independently of this adjustment lever via that mounting plate. Now, they may have already thought of this and there might be a reason why that doesn't work. Uh, maybe they need the support of this entire tooling arm to sit flat against this uh, aluminum tracking. I don't know, but I feel like there's some way that they could do something like that, or just get rid of this whole design, completely get, get rid of it. And um, not that it's a terrible design, it works. Um, and then move on to a uh, more standard tooling arm setup just for the work rest. I like this system over here. I don't like this system over here as much. All right, so sorry my uh, camera battery died, but uh, basically what I wanna do now is just show you the slack belt attachment or it's not an attachment, just the configuration that this can go in. Um, and this is one of the, my favorite parts of this machine, just how easy it is to do slack belt grinding. Um, and essentially we just take the platen off and we'll put our J flex belt on. And this is a really good, this is, this is just so awesome to have this slack belt, uh, you know, grinding right here. You don't have to do stuff weird just the camera. You don't have to do some weird stuff on the top. It's kind of dangerous, you know, having a, a sharp knife up here, if it catches on anything, it could throw it into you or whatever. It's just not the, the safest thing to do to slack, by, slack belt grind on the top. People do it. I've done it before too. Um, you know, do it at your own risk, but it is so nice to have a slack belt feature here um, and to be able to get to this point so quickly. Because essentially we just, you know, loosen one handle, pull the platen off and we're, we're there. All right, so that I think is about all I wanna show on this for now. 
I'll probably end up doing a more long-term review on this, um, you know, just as I use it over the next year, or two years or whatever, however long I have it, however long this YouTube thing keeps going, uh, however long I keep making knives, uh, you know, I'm gonna continue using this. And if anything happens, I will update everybody. If anybody has any questions about something in particular, you know, ask me and I'll try and answer it. One of the questions I get all the time is, does the two by 72 really make that much of a difference? And the answer is it does. It makes a huge, huge difference in not just the quality of the knives that you put out, but also how fast you can make them. Um, this thing will do stuff in a couple minutes that my four by 36 took all day to do. Um, it's a huge, huge upgrade compared to a four by 36. Now I still use my four by 36, believe it or not. Um, but you know, this thing just takes it to another level. Is it worth buying one of these? Uh, if you're just a hobby, hobby knife maker and you're just making knives for yourself, um, and you're just making knives here or there, um, then honestly, it probably isn't worth it. If you're looking into seriously selling your knives, you're gonna have to get one of these at some point. So the sooner you get one, the better. Um, and again, as far as which one is gonna be best, is this gonna be best, or is the KMG, or the TW90, or the Bader, as far as which one's gonna be the best, you're gonna have to do a lot of your own research on that. Um, what I will say is that, you know, with this thing being as cheap as it is for two by 72, you can put a lot of that extra money into an oven and that oven's gonna give you good heat treatment uh, no matter what you make. In my opinion, I would rather buy something a little bit more budget friendly, something that's gonna do what I need it to do right now and put that extra money into something that's gonna help me get good heat treatments. Um, you know, if you're already an established knife maker and you're already making money and you don't have problems spending the extra money on, you know, I don't wanna say nicer equipment uh, because I, you know, I don't want to say that it's it's nicer than this, but you do have more options with some of those other machines, you know, surface grinding attachments and um, just different stuff in general. You know, that might be the way to go for you um, if you're willing to spend, you know, twice or three times the amount of money to get that machine. I'd recommend it. Go check it out. Uh, I don't know. Tell them I sent you. Tell them I said hi. Uh, anyway, hopefully this video was helpful for somebody. Uh, sorry that it was a long video, but I did want to cover as much as I could cover in kind of a uh, uh, informal format like this. So I guess I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.